Director Miller will read it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Division 7, Gary Van Dam. Here. Division 6, Audrey Miller. Here. Division 5, Robert Paris. Here. Division 2, Keith Dias. Here. Division 1, Drew Mercy. Here. Division 3, Frank Donato. Here. Division 4, George Lane. Here. General Manager Newtson. Here. Attorney James Markman. Here. And Holly Hughes present. Yeah, you know, thank you. Um, item number four, um, voluntary roll call. Anybody is uh, listening in, of course, glad to hear. And so, if you care to identify yourself, we appreciate it. Julie Kyle, Kyle and Kyle Ranches. Yeah, welcome, Julie. Thank you, Mr. Mike Fence. Mike Fence 3, Jack Cephas. Jack, welcome. Good evening. Hi, George, John Joyce, and members of the board for the Roseman News. You and Roy, Roy's glad you're on. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, we'll move, move on to item number four or five, public uh, comments, period open to the public. If anyone would care to address the board on an item that is not on the agenda, um, it would be you now's the time to do so. I appreciate hearing from you. Then we'll move on to item number six, adoption of agenda um, six uh, A one. We need a motion and a second. Mercy, so moves. Director Mercy. Director Miller, a second. If there's no further discussion, um, Madam Secretary, we can have a roll call. Gary Van Dam. Yes. Audrey Miller. Yes. Robert Paris. Yes. Keith Dias. Yes. Drew Mercy. Yes. Frank Donato. Yes. George Lane. Yes. <clears throat> Motion carried. That'll bring us down to um, the Finance Committee. And we have a special um, workshop or presentation regarding our audit. And a representative um, is here, uh, Brandon Farrell, representing the firm uh, Eddie uh, Payne LLP. So. And we appreciate you you coming and and um, anyway just we'll turn it over to you and we'll start the presentation and there may be questions by the board. Yes. Okay. Again, my name is Brandon Farrell. I'm a partner with TDM Payne that was in charge of uh, this year's audit. Again, we uh, we are contracted to audit the financial statements uh, for the water agency for June 30, 2023. Uh, we have issued a, well, intend to issue a unmodified report, which is the best, uh, or, um, unqualified opinion, which is the best opinion uh, there is to get. So the, the, the short of it is um, another year that you guys got a clean audit. Um, again, uh, Teresa and the staff have been great in facilitating the audit, uh, very transparent, uh, got us all the information we needed and uh, wrapped it up fairly easily. I have prepared slides, um, just kind of simplify the, uh, the financial reporting or presentation to you. Um, if we go to the next slide, please. So uh, th this first uh, slide shows the statement of net positions, um, also known as the balance sheet. Um, it's segregated into um, assets and then liabilities and net, uh, net position. And you'll have a side-by-side -side comparison here between uh, the current year, uh, 630, 2023, and then 630, 2022. Uh, I'll just go go down line by line item here. Just kind of discuss the uh, the activity here. So current assets um, uh, this year came in at just uh, below 160 million dollars compared to 186 million dollars in the prior year. So that's a reduction of tw about 27 million dollars. Uh, restricted assets, which is uh, uh, investment uh, restricted investments, uh, 266 thousand compared to 621 in the prior year. Capital assets, again, those are all your fixed assets, land, and, and infrastructure. 
377 million dollars uh, compared to 344 million dollars in the prior year so that's a uh, increase of 33 million dollars year over year there total assets uh, came in at uh, 537 thousand dollars or sorry 537 million dollars compared to 531 million dollars in the prior year ultimately your total assets uh, increased about just under six million dollars and then uh, you'll see below uh, Below the uh, the total assets, about halfway down, you got total um, uh, assets and deferred outflows. Again, uh, the deferred outflows are timing differences as it relates to your guys' uh, OPEP uh, obligation. Um, so, including that, you have total assets and deferred outflows of five hundred, just under five hundred forty million dollars. Let me just interrupt you. Just one second. Yes, no problem. Is everybody following this okay? Would it help it slow down a little bit? Oh, no problem. Yeah, no problem. You, you know it a lot better than we do, so we're going to follow it. Yeah, it's and, kind of, and it's kind of the case. And, and it may be appropriate to see what the board's you know, wishes are, but if there's any you know, questions, we may interrupt you and ask this question. Yeah, absolutely. You know, now versus when Correct. it's done, it'll be, it'll be, it might be easier. So, okay. so I think there's any questions. Any, any questions on for what I've gone over so far? Can you just explain what the OPEP uh, post-employment benefits are? Um, it is your, it's kind of like a, a pension, but it's related to uh, your uh, posted point, uh, health care uh, for your for your retired employees. Got it. So it's that obligation. Thank you. So it, as it relates to that, you have a, a, a liability, and then you have a deferred outflow, and then a deferred inflow. Those are just tiny differences um, in the actuarial evaluation. And any other questions on what I've gone through so far? If you, if you could just hit um, the current assets, in other words, a de decrease in could you just hit uh, where that decrease came from? Yeah. 100, 150 um, million. million compared to 186 million. Brandon, I can, I can jump in on this one. Um, the decrease came from the uh, okay. I know what bonds you said. paid bond, off. Yeah. yeah, the variable bonds yeah. that you paid off. Yeah. I know we talked about that before. That was yeah. the answer. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other questions as far as the, the the total assets and deferred outflows of as I presented them? Okay. Um, moving on down, the next part of this uh, this slide here is current liabilities. Um, so it, it, the next part, like total section, would be your current liabilities, non-current liabilities, and then you get into your deferred out inflows and net position. So current liabilities in the current years, uh, just over $21 million compared to $17 million in the prior year. So that's an increase of about $4 million. Any questions on the current, uh, what mixed up or any specific questions on the current uh, liability section? Could you just you know, highlight what those are? So th those things include uh, accounts uh, payable, your accrued liabilities, um, your current uh, portion of your long-term liability. So you have a long-term liabilities for compensated absences, for subscriptions, for lease liabilities, and then of course your your current portion of your long term debt. So those are the the the, the bulk of what makes up those current assets. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, when we get down to the non current liabilities, uh, we came in this year at 68, just over $68 million compared to 100 and just under 100, I'm sorry, just over $119 million of the prior year. Ultimately, that is a decrease of uh, just under $51 million. And it's no, be noted that uh, the bulk of that decrease is related to the bond uh, being paid off. How much was the bond that we paid off? I thought that was in like 45 million. Any questions? And again, the, the, the long-term portion, again, it's made up the long-term portion of compensated absences, uh, your net OPIB liability, lease liabilities, your subscription liabilities, and then, of course, the long-term debt related to the box. Any questions? When you said the subscription. So, so subscriptions, uh, so this is a new accounting standard that was implemented in the current year. If you guys were familiar with the lease standard last year, GASB 87, it took off uh, balance sheet uh, leases, known as operating leases, like your copiers and vehicles, things of that nature, uh, which are typically not been reported as a liability, but there is typically like a five-year you know, contract on those. What that, did, what that did is it took that uh, 
five year liability, put it on the uh, balance sheet as a liability, and then puts a related right of use asset. Um, and then again, over the life of the lease, it amortizes everything off. So the same thing with your IT subscriptions, um, like your, your Office 365, um, what's your other software? We have Lattice for um, the water accounting. Um, we have Sunnyside Bank for the accounting software. So Gatsby 96 um, kind of does the same thing with the subscription-based IT uh, programs. So again, what that does is it puts a liability related to the subscriptions on, on as a liability, a right of use asset, and again, those are amortized off at, over the length of the, the subscription. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so finally, we get down to the bottom. Uh, well, your total, li total liabilities is your just under $90 million. Uh, in the current year compared to 136 million in the prior year. So overall liabilities, it's a, redu a reduction of about 47 million. Now the line below it again is your total liabilities, deferred inflows and your net position. Again, net positions, think about it as like your equity in the, in the, in the agency. Um, so a total there is the 530, uh, $540 million compared to 534 in the prior year. Ultimately that is a uh, increase there of about $5.5 million. Any questions as it relates to, and again, the deferred outflow is strictly related to the OPEB. And you're, like you said, your net position is segregated in two different sections. One that's kind of related to your net investment in capital assets, which is your, uh, your total capital assets less the related uh, liability that's related to those um, assets. Um, and then the, the remainder portion of the net position is just it's called unrestricted and it begins just for general use. Just touch on that deferred. Um Inflows again, please. Deferred inflows is the timing difference as it relates to the OPEB uh, liability. So again, remember it has a deferred outflow of net asset section, uh, 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 net uh, uh, liability in the liability section, and then you have a deferred uh, inflow um, in, below the, the liability section there. And it goes, those are just timing difference as it relates to the actuarial um, uh, values. Any further questions on the statement of net position or on the slide? Go to the next slide, please. This show you again gives you a further makeup of, of uh, what makes up total assets there. Uh, so we just did it in a pie chart for you. The biggest portion there in the green is uh, is your fixed assets. Um, I like this is missing one. Oh, it didn't get it squeezed on there for some reason. Um, I'll just read it as I have here. So <laughs> the, the red portion there is your cash and investments. The the purple portion is your uh, inventory, which is your banked water. Um, the blue portion, the larger blue portion there is your uh, your re receivables and prepaids. And then the tiny sliver there is just your other assets. So again, kind of gives you a breakdown of uh, what, what values are there um, that make up those uh, amounts. Any questions on this breakdown? Next slide, please. Again, just like the assets, what we did here, did a, a pie chart to show the, the breakup or the makeup of the liabilities. Your biggest portion there in the in the light blue section is your long uh, is your bond debt, the long term portion of the, long, the, the bond debt. Um, the uh, up towards the top there, the, the darker blue, the 12 million, uh, uh, just under 13 million, that's related to your AP and accrued liabilities. Your red section is current, the current portion of debt. Again, the current portion of long term liabilities is the amount that's due within the next 12 months. Uh, your uh, green portion there is just other current liabilities, which makes up just 1.5 million, and then your other long term uh, debt or liabilities there in the purple section. Again, that's your subscript, your long-term portion of compensated absences, your lease liability, uh, subscription liability, and so forth. Any questions on this makeup here? Just on that um, one item receivables in uh, prepaids, mm -hmm. where are they lumped together? Uh, Just because it was so, such an insignificant number at uh, deposits and prepaids, 
it only made up forty thousand dollars there. So we just we lump it in there rather than putting a little sliver there that no one can see. The receivables of that make up we got the remainder of it. So uh, whatever about twelve point or sorry. Go back to it. Yeah, it makes up the majority. The the, the only uh, portion of the that relates to the deposits and prepays is uh, just under forty thousand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any questions? Uh, any further questions um, on the statement and deposition or the two uh, the two charts that we just showed? Can I ask one question, please? It's Jim Markman, the counsel. Absolutely. Uh, that, that, the, the previous slide showed um, stored water and put a value on it, which I understand is the uh, fixed asset, the major fixed asset. Is that correct? The three hundred seventy-seven million, or no? So the, the the bank water is represented by the sixteen million four fifty. Okay. Uh, how did you? How, how did you? Uh, what was the approach to putting that value on? I am. That's what I'm curious about. Yeah, it's based on. Cost, right? Yeah, it's the cost of the water deliveries when we receive the water to banks. So whatever that um, okay. rate is that um, DWR charges at the time of delivery, that's what we capitalize it at. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Teresa. The cost of provide if we use some of this water for a replacement water obligation, there's additional costs that we need to capture to provide that. You know, there's banking costs and other right. things. But the cost you see on the pie chart, the sixteen point four five million, does not include ca any capital cost. It's strictly variable cost through DWR. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Oh, I have one. Oh. Good. Might be a harder one, but can you quickly summarize our bond indebtedness and what we're paying for these bonds? Like I'm, I'm looking at bonded debt, and I know we paid off the 2008 A2 series, but the WR refunding bonds 2016, the premium WR refunding bonds. If you could just give a quick summary of what we're paying on those bonds and what exactly they are. Well, I don't know if I have all of that information, but the water revenue bonds that refunded the 2007 COPs, the remaining balance of that issuance is $48.4 million. The CREBS, or the uh, Clean Renewable Energy Bonds that were issued in 2017, the remaining balance on that is $11.4 million. That's what's outstanding in total on those. And then the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Then there's a note in the in the notes of the financial statement that details out by year what payments, what principal and interest payments are to be made. Thank you. And that's a note within the within the note disclosures of the financial statements. So I don't have the notes with notes currently. With. Yeah. And those are fixed rate bonds. Is that correct? What, I'm sorry. Are they fixed rate yes. bonds? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Starting on page thirty-seven. So. Is the, is the footnote for those? Yeah. Any further questions? All right, I'll move on. So, next slide, please. So here is a slide uh, detailing the revenues and expenses. Uh, and it, again, we have the year over year here. So uh, total operating revenues, which include water sales, irrigation sales, and renewable water agreements, uh, just under $28 million for the current year compared to about $29.5 million in the prior year. Any questions uh, as it relates to the operating revenue? Okay. Uh, next. Yeah, I had a question. Yeah. This might be the, the staff, but it, 
Is it less water sold, or what was the reason for that? Yeah, so that's a good question. So um, if you remember, twenty calendar year 2022, we were in the second year of a 5% allocation. So everybody was in con conservation mode throughout the year of 2022. And this, uh, the first column you see there, uh, covers the period of July 1st through June 31st of last year. So that's why we're seeing a lower number um, for the current, or for the June 30, 2023, because we were, like I said, in the middle of that drought and everybody was in conservation mode <laughs> as compared to the prior year. That didn't have nothing to do with the rent down? No. Or no. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had more to do with the drought than the ramp down. Okay. But we are we are seeing a, a rebound this year. We're right on target to to sell lot close to forty thousand acre feet, which is what we're our budget is based on. Which would be back to the twenty nine million. Um, I don't know what the number will be for sales. Sorry, I don't have an in dollar amount. You'd hope so, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any, any other questions? Okay. Uh, the next section is the operating expenses. Um, again, this is made up of water purchases, pumping, water treatment, transmission, distributions, um, uh, GNA, um, and then uh, depreciation and amortization. Um, so again, operating expenses total it out at uh, just over thirty-six million dollars uh, for two thousand twenty-three, compared to just over thirty-four million dollars in the prior year. Um, you, again, you're kind of your big. You know, you have $10 million of uh, water purchases, um, just under $7 million of water treatment, and your other kind of big ticket items would be uh, just under $8 million of G&A, um, and then depreciation and amortization is about, yeah, about $8.6 million. How much of that would be depreciation? Uh, $8.4 million. So that would just about take care of the loss, then. Yep. <laughs> Any other questions? Maybe this again the management, but but that loss. I mean, should we have that, or should we, or, you know, we hope we we don't. Do you have any comments on that? Um, I mean, Teresa can jump in here, but, you know, uh, we're putting some of that loss back, in, the depreciation back into the system. So this does not show what the capital replacement costs are, correct, Teresa? That's correct. So we're putting that and then some back into the system to offset the depreciation. Yeah, and, and we... When we work on our budget, we try not to have an operating loss that, you know, we want to balance the operating revenue and expenses and balance the um, non-operating revenues and expenses. Um, I think water sales played a big part in the loss because water sales were down. And yes, we would try not to have that. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, uh, Chair, any other questions before I move on? Yeah. All right. So ultimately, again, uh, the next line down, uh, as uh, George indicated there, um, $8.5 million operating loss compared to about 4.7 in the prior year. Um, we move down here to non-operating revenues, which includes uh, tax revenues, uh, net investment income, um, some miscellaneous other revenues, uh, capacity charges, and then a big one this year would be the uh, capital contributions from the high uh, high desert water bank reimbursements. Um, so again, that uh, that amount, that total amount, came in at just over ninety million dollars in the current year, compared to fifty-two million dollars in the prior year. And how much of that was taxed? Uh, just under forty-two million dollars. And then you're looking at your capital contribution on the high desert water bank for uh, about thirty-six point five million dollars.
Any questions on uh, non-operating revenues? Um, so moving down, you got the, you get to your non-operating expenses. Um, two line items to make uh, this would be the state water contract expense and then the interest expense. So um, they both came in at a total of uh, just under $29 million this year, uh, about $27.5 million in the prior year. Um, just to note here, the state water project, uh, total expense was uh, just under $26 million and interest expense was about $3 million. Ultimately, that brings you to uh, the net increase or decrease in net position of $52.5 million compared to $20 million in the prior year. Any questions on uh, this slide in totality or any one of the individual sections? That, that, that increase of 52 uh, million, that increase of, of what? It, net position. So your you're equity. So you, you will call that net, just we call that net income. Or more layman things. But a good portion of that was uh, reimbursement of capital. Yeah, we had 30, uh, about $36.5 yeah. million. Dollars. Uh, so that's why you see that when you're comparing it to last year, the 20 million to the 52.5, yeah. uh, the majority of that is the reimbursement on the high, the high desert water, uh, water bank. Just a, a question, this would be from our accountant and staff both, but I mean, that's completely a separate agreement, you know, I think. Should be the, should be separate books on that? It looks like that's confusing to the board to follow that. It, it is to me. Um, Teresa can jump in here, but that, Based on the agreement, the, the facilities belong to AVAC. So in our agreement with, with Metropolitan, we own the assets. That's why we're showing that as an asset. It's not like Metropolitan owns any of the assets where it needs to be shown different, separately. Yeah, yeah. Since, since we retain the asset and we own the asset, when we receive those reimbursements, we record that as revenue. That's, that's the reason for that. It's it's not cash. We don't we're not getting that and putting it in a cash account. We're putting it in the capital asset account. So in the future, are we going to depreciate that asset, and will that be showing up as a? I mean, I would imagine that's going to be a huge depreciation number. Yeah. So in the next year, year after, we're going to start seeing our depreciation number go from eight to. 10, 12, 14 or something. And in our agreement, that's a good question, Rob, yeah. because in our agreement with Metropolitan, as part of the O&M, it includes um, replacement or depreciation. So each year we'll collect from Metropolitan as part of our O&M uh, deposit uh -huh. to cover depreciation so that there's a fund available to replace wells yeah, and we'll motors. In the future. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we show... Two million dollars of depreciation for high desert, then we're going to get two million that will go into yeah. our capital account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just note that um, this will not uh, the the high desert water break will not be starting to be depreciated until it is actually placed in service. Yeah. So right now, most all that money is sitting in construction and progress. So there's no depreciation related to that at this point. So once, once you know, flip the switch and we're, we're using it and it, everything's, you know, you all your certificates of occupancy and completion and all that, that's when we start depreciating. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's been answered, but we depreciate it? Yeah. Yes. And that's why, if you remember, we did collect a deposit from Metropolitan for this first year of operation. It only includes the staff time and equipment. It did not include depreciation because of what Brandon said. Yeah. So when are we expecting the depreciation to start? Is that going to be when all the wells are online? Uh, or when it's, yeah, when everything's it, placed in. It'll service probably be phased once all the recharge facilities become, are complete and become operational. That'll be start to be depreciated. And then later when all the wells come online, there'll be a phase. Sounds and then in 2024 or 2040, we own the total asset at that time? Um, at the end of the term of the agreement. So right now, the first initial term is through 2037 okay. with an optional 25-year extension. Oh. So 
Oh, it's okay. going to be a ways out. Okay. <laughs> you won't have to worry about it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Angel. So, Ra, uh, so uh, Matt, Matt, how did they? So, Matt has an asset here too. It seems to me, which is a right to storage space. It may be a contractual asset, but that's what they get out of all this. We have the physical operating facility. They have the for right of first refusal right for to all the storage space that's in Correct. there. I, yep. I, it's curious to me how that would show up on their books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. That is a good question. But the agreement's pretty clear that we own the facility. Oh, absolutely. And all the terms and conditions of them storing it there, including the payments yeah. to retrieve it, the leave behind provisions, all of that is our asset. But they yeah. also have one. They're paying for one. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, good, good question. Okay. Uh, if there's any other questions, I'll take those. If not, we'll go to the next slide. So again, uh, kind of like what we did with the assets and liabilities here, we kind of break out the revenues and sections here. Um, so your capital contributions, uh, total capital, capital contributions, uh, $39 million. Um, our water sales, you have your 20, just under $25 million. Uh, then you have your nickel, uh, nickel agreements for $5 million. Uh, investment earnings for 3.7. Uh, total tax revenue there, again, is the $42 million. And we got a couple down here for, uh, sorry. Oop, the nickel water agreement is the, the 2.7. And then the irrigation sales is the four, uh, $448,000. Any questions on the, the breakdown of the revenues? Wow. Next slide, please. Again, just to show the, the breakdown of expenses, I kind of went over them earlier here, but here's a, a graphic for you. Um, the state water contract expense is the largest expense here at uh, just under $26 million. Um, I'll just go around the, the gambit here. Interest expenses at uh, $3 million. Uh, water purchases at $10 million. Pumping water. At, sorry, yeah, pumping was at uh, $1.9 million. Water treatment at six point nine. million. Uh, G&A was at just under $8 million. And then the depreciation and amortization is the eight point six million dollars there. Any questions on the breakdown of the operating expenses? Next page, please. And again, just kind of note um, on, on the overall audit. Uh, again, part of our audit, we are required to assess internal controls. We did do testing of the controls for uh, three different areas. Um, and again, within our testing, we found no uh, no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses. So again, that's a hats off to the staff here on running a clean ship. Any questions in general? Yeah, we... Uh Brought rates up last year seven and a half percent, and I thought that would have kind of made the difference on that loss a little bit more. But <laughs> basically, it was uh, water sales. The water amount. sales were I, down. I kind of figured that because didn't we raise them seven and a half percent? We did, but you know, it's a combination of water, water sales being down and the expenses up. You know, because everything's up: chemical costs, energy costs. Right, material cost, everything's been up. Well. Matt, do you have any, you know, comments we raised in you know, the water rates? You know, did that give you use less water because of that? Mm -hmm. Is there an effect? You know, the the increase in water rates took effect. When did that go in? In July, July first of this year. So we haven't seen any reduction in sales you know that's that was in the middle of summer and john can probably chime in here but uh demand was still going up in july july and august it went up 
from the prior months and from what we saw last couple of years. It's been up significantly. So I don't think, my opinion is the 7.5% did not have an impact on the the acre feet of water sold or current, currently being sold. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And that concludes my presentation if there's no further questions. Thank you very okay. much. And again, I just want to want to thank uh, uh, Teresa here. Um, it's a pleasure working with a former auditor. It makes my job a lot easier. So <laughs> you guys got a good one. Don't let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Good job, Teresa. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you much. Um, Frank or Keith, do you have any questions? I, I have no questions. Go ahead, Keith. Um, I, I was thinking along the same lines as Gary Van Dam. I, I thought our rate increase would have had a, a uh, an effect on those losses, uh, but it was explained why why it wasn't. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I want to uh, thank our, our um, auditor for the uh, presentation. They presented to the board. I think it was gives a thorough understanding of what the committee went through. And I think the seven and a half percent. I wish the rest of my my life was only seven and a half percent. It doesn't affect the water. It doesn't affect gasoline. Uh, it doesn't affect anything. So um, we still have the lowest water rate in the entire Southern California region. Yeah, we're we barely pay cover the cost, but we got to continue to look at this because if we don't, we're a victim of circumstances. We we cannot control the state, and we cannot control the federal government. So we have to stay within line. Um, as long as we're not, you know, continuing to um, dwindle our reserves. I can tell you this: I compliment the board for stepping out of. The box, because nobody pays off their bonds in the middle of a recession. I like to know one other water agency in the state of California that paid off bonds of any sort in the middle of a recession. So we're doing we're doing on both ends. We're paying off debt at the same time minimizing uh, the costs of increases. But again, um, it goes back to our auditor. He did a good job, and um, you know, like you said, it's a new format. And, and uh, Teresa's very happy with it, and we're happy with it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Brian. Uh, is there any other you know, comments or questions from the board? Okay, and item number, um, it would be a board order on item 782 to accept uh, the audit report for the period ending June uh, 30th, 2023. Uh, so we'll just open the questions. The motion would be in order. Or not, do I approve that we uh, accept board order um, 782? Again, motion, Director Donato. The second from. Everybody don't speak at once. <laughs> Gary Van Dam. The second from Director Van Dam. Hey, if there's no further um, yeah, questions or comments, uh, Madam Secretary. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Karras? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes. Drew Mercy? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Um, motion carried. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you for showing up in person. Good job, Brandon. <clears throat> Brandon. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to uh, item number uh, 783 um, as far as our check register. And uh, that's before is anybody wants to take a, a few minutes and yeah you know, frank we could turn that over to you if you would uh if you would like okay um <clears throat> well, i mean matt matt probably the one that needs to um just uh, go over that okay thanks uh director yeah. Tano. uh on page 60 is the first page of our checklist that covers the period of november 2nd through november 16th we went through this in detail with the finance committee last week and um you know item number one there on the first page is our monthly 
statement of charges payment to DWR, roughly $1.56 million. Um, so we didn't have any charges for actual water uh, deliveries through the state water project last month from DWR. Um, we did go through everything else. I'm trying to think here if there's anything else that jumped out that would be of interest to the full board, but um, I, Matt, I would let, uh, also let the full board know who reviews uh, your guys' uh, credit statement. Yeah, so also on the first page, uh, you know, the various managers are listed there for the agency that have credit cards. So I review all the department heads' uh, credit card statements. Mine and Holly Hughes' credit card is reviewed by uh, President Lane. So. Thank you. So to ensure we have good checks and balances internal. Yeah, everything else is pretty standard. Um, on the second page, we have a couple payments associated with the property acquisition that we're in escrow on currently. Remember the 450 acres plus or minus out adjacent to the high desert water bank. We're in escrow on that piece of property, and we're also in escrow on two small properties adjacent to the Acton Water Treatment Plant on Sierra Highway. So we did some due diligence. Uh, we did some mapping of all the ex ex uh, easements and exceptions based on the title report, um, and we also performed a phase one environmental site assessment for both those properties, and everything uh, came back clear. So. We'll probably be presenting that to the board in closed session at our next meeting prior to closing escrow on those properties. Did we do that 17-day 17, 17 feasibility study? Yeah. Okay. And, yep, that's all I have, unless you have any questions. You were um, ready for a motion unless... Anybody from the board would like to take a few minutes for the review, but did uh, Attorney Markman look over those escrow papers? Yes. Yeah, yeah Jim and his... Um, and and my real estate partner, Bruce Galloway, was drafting it. Yeah, they reviewed, or they prepared the uh, purchase agreement and reviewed all the escrow documents. All look good, Jim? Yes, very well. Done well. Good. Okay, uh, we would need a motion on item 7A3, except uh, in follower uh, our check register. Motion would be in order. Mr. President, this is Rob. I move that we accept the check register. You have a motion by Director Parrish and a second by Director Miller. I'll second. Director Miller. There's no further discussion. Madam Secretary. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes. Drew Mercy? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. George Lane? Yes. <coughs> Motion carried. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that'll bring us down to item number um, 7A4, consideration to accept and follow treasurer's report. Teresa, are you going to yeah, talk I'll, to us on that? Yes. Thank you, Director Lane. This is the treasurer's report for October. And um, average yield to maturity for the total portfolio for October was 3.95%, which was up 0.053% from September. Average days to maturity for the total portfolio was 236 days or approximately eight months. And total cash and investments at October 31st. 124.4 million, which was up 4.2 million from September 30th. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, the Finance Committee reviewed that and thank you doing a good job. But everything looks, you know, well, the director of the model, is there any, um, you have any comments? No, we're, um, uh, the agency is doing well. And um, we're also done getting a good return on our investments as well, so. Okay, so if there's no further 
Any questions or comments? Uh, motion would be in order for 7A4. Mr. President, I'll move on 7A4. In motion by Director Miller. Director Van Dam, second. Director Van Dam, a second. Um, Madam, if there's no further you know, questions, we'll have a roll call vote. Gary Van Dam. Yes. Audrey Miller. Yes. Robert Paris. Yes. Keith Dias. Yes. Drew Mercy. Yes. Frank Donato. Yes. George Lane. Yes. Motion carried. You know, <clears throat> thank you. So I think our agenda is going to be fairly short this evening. Uh, we'll just keep going and move on to item number eight, the general manager's report. Uh, Matt? Yeah, just one slide. Um, upcoming events and schedule. <clears throat> this week we have the Aqua Conference, so I'll be attending that tomorrow through Thursday. I'll be back in the office on Friday. Um, we're going to have a special – or our meeting that was regularly scheduled for tomorrow night has been canceled. You probably all saw that, but just mm -hmm. a reminder, tomorrow night's been canceled. Uh, we are going to have a special board meeting on a week from today. Monday is the December 4th at 5.30 p.m. And the reason for the cancellation and the special meeting is really to make sure we have time to receive what's being presented to the water master at their special meeting on December 5th and have our meeting the day before to get consensus on our direction at the water master meeting. So because that information is not available right now and the advisory committee is meeting this week, I thought it'd be best to wait until after the advisory committee and all that material is available before we meet as a board. So, so that meeting will be Monday at 530. And then we have the water master special meeting on Tuesday the 5th at 10 a.m. here at AVAC, we're on Zoom. Uh, just a reminder, if you haven't signed up for and would like to attend the AV Edge Holiday Breakfast, that is scheduled for December 12th at 7.30 a.m. And we are scheduled to have the Antelope Valley State Water Contractors Association meeting here at AVAC on December 14th. It's a Thursday at 6 p.m. So that's what we have coming up next couple weeks. You happy to answer any questions? All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Matt. That'll uh, bring us down to item number nine. Uh, is there any director like is any reports or anything to add? Move to item number 10, attorney report. I, I have none, uh, George. Okay. Item number 11, request for future agenda items. Okay, that actually, excuse me, fast meeting brings us down to item number 12. Um, um, you adjourn to a special board meeting of um, December 4th, 2023 at 5.30. Mr. President, I move we adjourn. Motion by Director Paris. Need a second. Van Dam, second. Director Van Dam, the second. <coughs> um, no further questions, Madam Secretary. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Harris? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes. Drew Mercy? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Motion carried. We're adjourned, and you know, thank you, everyone. Never. Good evening. Thank you. <clears throat>